And so if you are worried about what your kids see on social media, you are certainly not alone. And this morning, the American Psychological Association issued new guidelines. They say adults should monitor what kids between the ages of 10 and 14 do online and screen for problematic usage while avoiding apps that are centered around beauty or appearance entirely. Joining us now is NBC News correspondent Savannah Sellers. Savannah, there's been so much focus on the negative impacts mm -hmm. of social media, especially Definitely. on young, developing minds. Tell us more about this guidance and, and just how realistic is it to follow for families? Yeah, it's a really good question because it's like, how much can this really help? What does this mean for parents? The first thing I'll say that I think is interesting is just how this was done. It was people from all over the psychology world that actually analyzed many different studies that have come out. We were talking about how there's been a lot of headlines. This is bad. That's bad. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of an aggregate and then sort of what do we do about all that information, which I think can be helpful for parents. You just mentioned some of the really big ones in there. One that I think is really important for parents to kind of understand is this comparison trap that happens when you're online and the American Psychological Association focused on that. They said the beauty and appearance issue that you see on these apps, it is real. There's some other things that are a little bit more nebulous, like avoiding spaces where there might be cyber hate. I think, of course, we would all like to do that, but sometimes those are the types of things that happen accidentally. I think the biggest takeaway for parents would be that this is a conversation starter. There are 10 really good things here to be aware of, at the very least, that does happen and is sort of this trap of social media. How can you start to have those conversations with your kids about what to do about those things? Another big one that could be a little bit easy is to think about how screen time might impact sleep or physical mm. activity that maybe could be set, you know, with just a rule or something like that, taking the phone out of the bedroom at night, things like that are suggested. But it's not just about what they see on their screen, it's about what they're not doing when they're spending that time on spending that time on their phone. The other can be done by the tech companies that own and operate mm -hmm. these apps to try to help families. Great, great question. And a lot of this is aimed also at those companies. Really big question, what are you doing about your algorithm? If you do have users that are under the age of 18, are they getting the same algorithm that an adult brain can mm -hmm. at least sort of reason against? Maybe a child's brain cannot. Same with that like button. Should children, should young teenagers be compared and be using that like button? Or are there certain features that can be changed? That will remain to be seen both with the companies themselves as well as if any legislation changes those things. Such good information, important conversation. Savannah Sellers, good to see you. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, thank you.